Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, August 7th, and it's already a hot day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. I've changed my routine. I, I know, I know. Excuse me while I get my tamper that I should have already gotten. Um, I'm, I'm a creature of habit, as I've told you many times, and my morning routine is one that is uh, generally not touched but a few weeks ago I had to mix it up because uh, I don't remember why something happened I had to mix things up and it like just set me off for the whole day and it bothered me but uh, today because of the heat I realized well it's gonna get really hot quick uh, I wanted to clean up the yard some branches came down in a storm and stuff I like to brush the dogs on Sundays and, and I said you know what I'm gonna do that first and then talk to you guys. <laughs> and I kind of like it because I had time to, uh, you know, maybe wake up a little bit more. Although I'm pretty awake by the time I do this. You know, I usually do all the, uh, you know, the wake up, shower, coffee, first pipe of the day, all that stuff. Uh, praying, checking email, uh, letting the dogs go out. So by the time I'm I'm doing these videos, it's usually an hour and a half or so has passed. But uh, today was it was a bit more of a slower pace, and I kind of liked it. I might stick with this routine. We'll see. So oh, I had a great day yesterday. And it's looking like this is going to be a great weekend. So I went and uh, visited my friend Eric. Uh, goes by Eric S. He's one of one of the many folks that are viewers and commenters, but uh, don't believe he's made videos. But wonderful guy. I met Eric. Uh, well, according to Google Maps, <laughs> I, I last visited him three years ago, uh, which is a shame because he doesn't live that far away. But we met probably three or four months before that and uh, got a lot in common um, and one of the things that we have in common is that Eric is a woodworker he's uh, a much much more accomplished woodworker than I ever am you know I'm a, I'm a hobbyist he's actually done it uh, people have paid him to do it so. <laughs> and does beautiful work um, cabinet work and uh, more recently wood turn very knowledgeable guy and if he doesn't know the answer he knows somebody that does so good guy to know anyway uh, Eric had a lathe that he was looking to sell and I wanted to get a larger wood lathe uh, better wood lathe I'll show you my old and new in a bit and uh, he told me about this lathe that he was trying to sell and it was an extremely reasonable price and I know Eric I know he takes good care of his tools and everything so it was kind of an no brainer for me. Uh, so went over to, to check it out and ultimately to buy it and bring it home yesterday and just had a wonderful time. Met, met Eric's wife Sonia and uh, had some coffee and chatted for a while. We went into to a shop. We had a pipe or two. Uh, shared some tobacco. Looked at his tools. Uh, just, just a great day. And uh, we disassembled the lathe. Put it in my wife's car because it wouldn't fit in mine. Actually it might have fit in mine but it would have been cramped. Uh, and I, I drove it home and uh, got it down the basement, which is always a challenge, but not, not too bad. I pride myself in the fact that every piece of equipment that I have down here, and I've got table saw, band saw, drill press, i got some big equipment down here. Um, I brought it down here myself, and I, it takes some thinking sometimes <laughs> and some, some maneuvering, but... Uh, it's, it's never been dangerous, you know, if I, if I need help, I'll ask for help, but so far I, I haven't needed help. Anyway, got the lathe down here, got it all put together and assembled, haven't done anything with it yet, but I'm um, very, very happy. So, uh, and, and just had a great time with Eric. Later today, I'm going to go visit my buddy Ed, uh, Armchair Piper, and have a few pipes with him. So I'm really looking forward to that as well. And uh, I'm going to meet him early this afternoon, and we'll probably spend a couple hours together. Always, always a great time to visit with Ed. He's a very gracious host. Uh, 
and uh, just enjoy talking to him. Oh, by the way, I've got my Bing's, uh, my Boswell Bing's, and I am smoking something a little different. This is, uh, you're not going to be able to read this probably, but this is Samoy, uh, the Vincent Menil uh, La Brumis. I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, this is from March of 2014. Yeah, March. So this is, uh, but it's burly. Yeah. And Samoy, I haven't had Samoy in a while. Might be four or five years, but uh, I have a lot of it jarred up, and it's a it's a very interesting tobacco if you haven't tried it. It's pure burley, single leaf burley, all hand processed, packaged in these bricks, and it is delicious. It's not it's more floral than nutty, and don't be put off by the floral. Like it's not really floral. It's it's like an herbal. Yeah, floral's right, but it's not like you know, old lady purse floral, like some Lakelands are purported to be. It's really a, a wonderful tobacco. If you ever decide to try some way, it's similar to Five Brothers. It's dry and it's a very fine shag cut. So I can show you some. And I actually hydrate mine a bit. You don't have to. Um, you're, you're not technically supposed to, but uh, you, know, you can sort of see the, and you can hear kind of crunchy. I don't know if you could hear that. I hope you could. So it's very, it's very similar to Five Brothers, and you should treat it like Five Brothers in that you want to really pack it tight, you know, tighter than you think you should. Uh, with shag cuts, that's always a good idea. You know, you got to be able to draw, but as long as you you get tightly packed, don't puff it really fast. You know, don't don't try to freight train it. And that's about it. And it will reward you. I'll take some of this with me to uh, when I see Ed and see if I can get him to try it. Ed's Ed's well, he's. He's, he said he's enjoying Haunted Bookshop now, so he's coming along. <laughs> he's, he's an English guy. He, uh, well, he's, he's, he actually smokes a lot of stuff. He's, he's pretty, I hate to say promiscuous, but that's the only word that comes to mind in terms of his tobaccos. Uh, he's very particular about his pipes, though. Man, does that have, man, man, does that man have some beautiful pipes. So... Hmm. The other thing is you got to tend Samoy, it, it will go out quickly. Which is good because that means it's not burning so hot that it's going to melt your tongue. All right, uh, lathes. Uh, I got some pictures here to assist me as I, as I talk through this. Hopefully they're in the right order. Uh, they're not. There we go. So that's my... Uh, the lathe that I am replacing, not really replacing. This is a Grizzly. Uh, it is a six, well, wait a minute. I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget it. It is a 10 by 16. So what that means is that the largest thing you could turn on this, in theory, would have a 10 inch diameter. So that can spin something 10 inches in diameter. But of course, you gotta get the banjo under that. You gotta, it, it, it's probably more like eight eight to nine inches maximum and it's 16 inches long now this lathe has served me really well I found this on Craigslist uh, went over and checked it out and by the way that what it's sitting on right now is not the bench I use it on that's just a little cart type thing that I'm holding it on temporarily um, it, you know, checked it out. The guy let me run it and everything and I think I paid 120 for it so you know really great deal. This was, oh boy, at least eight years ago. And it's perfect. It runs perfectly still. It's a little loose. It's a little loose in the alignment. Um, but it's served me really well. And for something like pen turning or tampers, it's a great lathe. I am going to, I, I use it for buffing. I have a arbor that fits in it and spins three buffs. And I'm going to convert this basically to a full-time buffing setup. 
And of course, if I ever need to use it for something else, I can pop the arbor out and do whatever. So yeah, that's what's being replaced. And for scale, I wanted to show you, this is a close up of, uh, I put my pipe jaws back on. These are the Vermont freehand jaws. I've modified them a bit, but uh, they're aluminum pipe jaws. They work pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with them uh, so far. And just to give you an idea of the difference in size, so that's that's the jaws on the uh, the old lathe. The new one is a Rikon. Uh, I know it's a little bit hard to see in this picture because I wanted to get the whole thing in. So this is a 12 and a half by 20. So that means you can, in theory, spin something 12 and a half inches in diameter. And it's 20 inches between center. So you can work on something 20 inches long. The old one was 16 inches long. However, you'll notice there's also a bed extension, that thing that's closest to the, uh, to the right of the picture, the blue uh, bed extension that goes from the switch, which is kind of in the center of the lathe, to the right hand end of it. That brings it out to 40 inches, which is really remarkable. Uh, you know, going from 16 inches to 40 inches is quite a jump. And so the nice thing about that is you can turn long things, you know, if you're making uh, table legs or uh, Eric was showing me some baseball bats that he made. Uh, and I've never had a need for that, but what's really nice about this for me is that I can get that tailstock out of the way without taking it off the lathe. I can slide it all the way to the end and I've got all that room to get in there and uh, you know work on the inside of a bowl, or a, a pipe bowl, or, or, or something else. And so I, I really like that. And uh, another close up here, these are the same uh, pipe jaws mounted on the new lathe and you can see it's a, it's a wee bit bigger. <laughs> I, I told Eric, uh, after I got it set up, I said that the chuck actually looks silly on this. It's so small. Uh, so I'm planning on doing some tool upgrades and all all that, and uh, probably going to get some new a new chuck for it. And uh, yeah, we'll see. So that's the new lathe. I'm very happy with it. Happy with the old lathe too, and looking forward to getting back into uh, various woodworking stuff as the shop now coalesces back together. Uh, you need to get the dust collection system set up. That's the next major uh, hurdle. But I can use everything. I just don't have good dust collection right now. And uh, yeah, looking forward to making some pipes. So I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, so that's, you know, my weekend in a nutshell, really. <laughs> It's been a great weekend. Uh, last week was very busy with work. And I think for the rest of the day, I'm just going to relax and until I have to go see Ed. And uh, then enjoy some relaxing conversation with him. Back to work tomorrow. Um... Not a heavy week, but a lot of work to do. Last thing. This coming Saturday is Carter Hall Day. The birthday of Carter Hall. Um, I believe it's going to be the 67th birthday, and that would be... I'm trying to look at my calendar here. That would be the 13th. So we're going to celebrate... And I encourage you to do this. I'd like to get this to be a thing. You know, I'd like people to actually recognize Carter Hall Day. And some do. But, uh, so if you got some Carter Hall, get it out on Saturday and smoke it. Make a video. Put it on Instagram. Hashtag it Carter Hall Day. I hate that hashtag. You know that, that thing that normal people call a number sign, uh, but the kids call it a hashtag? The actual name of that is the Octothorpe. I like that. I'm going to, I'm going to say Octothorpe it from that one, but nobody will know what I'm talking about. Anyway, put a little Octothorpe followed by the word uh, Carter Hall Day, all one word. Uh, do that on, on your, your Twitters and your My Faces and everything. Get the word out that it's Carter Hall Day on Saturday. I get nothing from this. I just want a wonderful blend to be recognized. A wonderful historic blend. 
Wait, this is it's not behaving as I get towards the bottom of the bowl for some reason. And on our Friday live stream, on the Friday live stream, we're going to have an open Google Meet. So I'm going to put the link in the description. I got to get a moderator signed on to, to, to be a co-manager of the Google Meet just in case. So if you're one of my mods and you'd like to do that, let me know. Uh, otherwise, I'll be reaching out to you. And, uh, you know, we're just going to hang out. Uh, whoever wants to come in can come in. Uh, if you're smoking Carter Hall, that'd be great. If you got a different Codger blend, that'd be great. Uh, if you just want to stop in and chat. Uh, that's what we're going to do on Friday night. I think it'll be fun. Uh, we'll still have the comments going, so I'll still be interacting with the folks through comments and everything. And But this will allow people to have a chance to talk to one another as well. And I think this is going to be a lot of fun. We'll see how it goes. I've avoided this in the past because I don't like not being able to pay strict attention to the comments. You know, one person is okay because I can still follow it. But when if you start to have 8, 10, 12 people, it, it becomes a party and then you can't, there's another party off to the side that you can't pay attention to. But we'll see how it goes. And if you, you're interested in, in stopping into the Google Meet, it's really easy to use. There's just going to be a link. You click on the link. It says, can I use your camera? You know, yes, microphone, yes, and bang, you're in. Uh, so, yeah, it's a good good platform for this sort of thing. Okay, well that's it. Carter Hall Day. We're going to celebrate it on Friday, uh, which is actually Carter Hall Day Eve. And uh, get the word out. Not not. Well, if you want to get the word out about the Friday live stream, that's great. But uh, you can wait until I put up a notification for that. And again, the link will be in the the, the description of the notification for you to get to the Google Meet. But uh, get the word out about Carter Hall Day. I want to see more people uh, celebrating Carter Hall Day. All right, folks, with that, I'm going to draw this to a close. It's been great talking to you. I hope your Sunday is going well, and you're looking forward to a fantastic week ahead. So with that, until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now. Mm -hmm.